Welcome to Sark, crown jewel of the Channel Islands. Here are some simple tips to help make the most of your visit. Do wear comfortable shoes suitable for travel by foot. Sark has several walking paths which showcase spectacular scenery including clifftop views. Do not bring a gun. The last time someone attempted to take over Sark, it did not go well. The island of Sark is sandwiched between Guernsey and Jersey, about 80 miles south of the coast of Britain. It's tiny, about 2.10 square miles, and home to around 600 people. Its official languages are English and French. A few residents also speak Serkia, an old Norman dialect native to the island. Sark is a British royal fiefdom that's been following its own set of laws based on ancient Norman law for over 400 years. At the time of our story, it was governed autonomously by a seigneur or a dame, a hereditary position. There's also a small parliament made up of residents called the Court of Chief Police. There is no airport on the island, goods are shipped via cargo boat or ferry, cars are banned, the citizens walk, bicycle, and use horses and carts or tractors to tow large items. There are no streetlights either. Sark is a refuge from the modern world. It's slow-paced, peaceful, and quiet. The tale of the invasion has now passed into legend, and there are a couple of different views as to exactly what happened. August 1990 André Gard, an unemployed nuclear physicist from Rocheville, France, researched his family history. He became convinced that he was a legitimate descendant of Elia de Carteret, the first Lord of Sark, who received the fiefdom from the hands of Queen Elizabeth I. Therefore, he should be the seigneur of Sark. André decided to make this happen by staging a coup. He concealed a semi-automatic assault rifle along with 260 rounds of ammunition and managed to get his weapon through French, Jersey, and Guernsey customs. He took the 50-minute ferry ride from Guernsey to Sark, dressed in combat fatigues. Upon arrival, André wandered through his would-be fiefdom. The town was small. On the unpaved main street, there were a couple of pubs, two hotels, and a food shop. André posted a few notices up and down the street and on Sark's main notice board. Prior to his trip, he had already alerted the world's embassies of his coup intentions by Telex, an old-school telephone-to-printer network. According to the notice, he set a deadline after which he would rightfully claim Seigneur of Sark, take over the island, its airspace, and its territorial waters. The deadline was the next day at noon. The flyer also warned that violators would be seen off with a rigorous force. Satisfied with his declaration, André went to bed down in the churchyard for the night. The Ventenier, or Assistant Constable Trevor Kendall, one of Sark's two volunteer part-time constables, noticed André's flyer. In fact, he was one of the few citizens of Sark to do so. The other citizens who read it took it as a joke, but Constable Kendall took it seriously. He was already suspicious. It was illegal to sleep rough on Sark. The next morning, the only other law enforcement officer on Sark, Constable Phil Perry, took a stroll along the beach and throughout the town looking for any signs of an invading force. Not long before noon, he found André still dressed in his fatigues, sitting on a park bench, loading his gun. Sadly for André, none of the island's residents had decided to join his coup. Constable Perry casually chatted with André about the upcoming invasion, complimenting him on his gun. He eventually talked André into handing over his gun so he could admire it up close. André, being no fool, didn't want the gun turned against him, so he removed the magazine before handing it over for inspection. Constable Perry took the gun and promptly socked André in the nose and then tackled him while he was incapacitated. Then André was taken into custody, thus ending the invasion. The senior of Sark, John Michael Beaumont, missed the attempted invasion. He had taken the ferry to Guernsey to do some banking. The gun used by André in the attempted coup now sits in the Sark Museum, next to old ships and a dedicated exhibit to one of the island's two original telephone calls. André was taken to Sark's tiny prison, which was known for possibly being the world's smallest prison. It's just two windowless cells, one measuring 6 feet by 6 and the other measuring 6 feet by 8 with a three-foot-wide corridor that runs in front of them. Each cell contains a wood-slatted bed and a thin mattress. Often, the prison is used to hold drunken tourists until they sober up or until the ferry arrives and they can be kicked off the island. Per judicial powers granted on the island in the 16th century, the Sark prison can only hold prisoners for a maximum of two days. If a longer punishment is needed, the offender is shipped off to Guernsey. André received a seven-day jail sentence, so he was sent to Guernsey to serve out the rest of his sentence. Sark had to pay Guernsey for the use of their jail, a small hardship for the island. After serving his sentence, André was deported to France. Believe it or not, the next summer André tried to return to Sark, possibly for a second coup attempt. However, the ferry captain recognized him and refused to let him on the ferry. It's rather surprising that André received such a short jail sentence, but in all the Channel Islands and Sark in particular have unique ancient laws. Probably the most famous law is the Haro Clamor, a legal injunction. If a resident of the Channel Islands feels they're being wronged, they can invoke the Haro Clamor by going to the location of the offense and kneeling in front of two witnesses and the wrongdoer. They then raise one hand in the air and exclaim, Hear me, hear me, hear me, come to my aid, my prince, for someone does me wrong. 
They then must recite the Lord's Prayer in French. Then the grievance must be put into writing and lodged with the court clerk within 24 hours. Invoking the Hero Clamor results in an immediate injunction where the alleged wrongdoer must stop doing the challenged activities until the court hears the case. If the wrongdoer refuses to stop, they are fined, no matter what party is in the right. If the resident who invoked the Haro did so without a valid reason, they must pay a penalty. The last time the Haro Clamor was used by a resident of Sark was in 1970 in a dispute over a garden wall. Think trying to steal an island is crazy? That's just the tip of the iceberg. Here are 20 of the weirdest things that have ever been stolen by thieves.